And we are happy to be joined by Martin Lusser of Jane. How are you doing? All right, I'm very well. Thank you. So, as soon as though it's your first time on 120 minutes, I know, uh, fill us in on a bit of the early part of how Jane got together and stuff, because I know that we were, was there a couple of you in a previous band. Mm -hmm. so yeah, we, we formed really from the, the, well, the ashes of Spin, um, which was um, Matt, the drummer, and Steve, the right. guitarist. And basically, what happened, they had, the, to, to keep it brief, they had a, a road accident. Um, and essentially the band split and they knew Kev um, from this uh, sort of Cleethorpes Mafia right and um, they auditioned about 30 people for the, for the job of, of a singer found no one right um, and I bumped into Steve in a horribly sort of Malcolm McLaren-esque <laughs> um, <laughs> style um, in the underworld in Camden um, right. at a gig of which I can't remember who it, who who was playing but right. um, and he approached me uh, with a few too many beers in his belly and said, can you sing? 
Um, what was it? One of those things where he looks good, he'll do it. Yes, it, it, uh, well, uh, well, according to him, I, I, find, <laughs> I find it hard to believe myself. But um, yeah, he, he approached me and said, can you sing? And I, I, think, I think I responded, why? Um, which was uh, the obvious You answer. didn't have to like perform on the spot. No, no, it wasn't. Sing it, for your beer. But there wasn't, no, there, there was no sort of sideshow. Right. Um, and I, I auditioned and got the job. And we, we simply rehearsed and wrote for nine months before... Um, we began our, our torture of the world. Right. So what was the motivation in putting the band together? Was it, um, did you not find anything that you could find yourself as fans to listen to, you know? There, 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 there always is that. I mean, I, I'm, I'm very choosy. My record collection isn't that large simply because I can't find enough things I like. Right. Um, and so there, there, there was that factor that, you know, we wanted to be better than everybody else, of course. Yeah. Um, it was, but as, as soon as we... As soon as we rehearsed it, I mean, it became obvious to me that there was there was something there that, that could be um, nurtured right. and brought out. Now you were tagged as well um, <laughs> oh, yes. with the, uh, the the old British music press, God bless them, with mm. this kind of like this is the best band in the world sort of rubbish that they stick on their covers. Did, did, I mean, was that an uncomfortable thing to have happened to you? Um, not really, because because when when. Not menswear, and I'm, I'm not not dismissing menswear, but they're going to have a very difficult job because they've played nine shows and they've been together um, not very long. I right. Mean, the, the number of months eludes me, but we hid ourselves away and, and wrote, and we, we didn't actually play a gig until we thought we had ten good songs. Right. Um, Always a good idea. Which um, certainly helped. And so when, when it when it did all start happening, um, I think we were a little more prepared than most. Right. An Oasis, to a point, stole our, stole our thunder, which I'm quite, quite happy about because it, it's, it's let us um, grow mm, with not quite as much limelight as we might have had. Right. Because you also didn't, with the first release, you set up your own label. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what was, why, why would you do that instead of well, sort of touting yourselves yeah. around the existing label? Well, in, in fact, it was, it was a couple of journalists who, who saw us. It was Keith Cameron and, and Roy Wilkinson. And, and Roy just happened to see us at a gig in Brixton you know, with about 30 people and a couple of spaniels and a bag of crisps and um, he, he liked it and I think he'd always had this dream you know, and, and I, I assume he, he, he thought it was going to be a pipe dream forever but he, he saw us and um, thought well we might as well take the plunge. Right, so and they set the label up with you? Yeah well they, they set the label up purely to just 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 the hell of releasing a record just for, so they could you know be, be part of it right. and uh, we released For the Dead uh, only 2,000 copies um, simply because there was no more money. Right. And, um, well, we'll and that was past that one. Yeah, that we'll was the that. <laughs> we'll jump straight to your second single. Yes. Uh, this is Sleep Well Tonight. This is Jean. It's the end of the year. I have just settled here. It may not be much, but it's enough. Yet trouble has sprung from the pubs and the clubs We'll see blood soon when the night's through Still you can have it all, there's a hole in the wall Get some money and we'll show them This is our territory
Happily, we're still in the company of Martin Roster, of Gene. Now, your debut album gets released tomorrow, Olympian. Mm -hmm. um, you, you're in sort of that very, I, well, I would uh, consider a very fortunate position that is a one time only, of that you've had the opportunity to form the band, you know, and uh, write the songs at your own sort of speed. Yeah. Um, when, you, when you knew that it was time to make the record, did you sort of go into an intense period of sort of work of like, okay, now we have to write more songs to make it sound like an album, or was it all there from the live stuff? It was mostly there. Um, we, we didn't consciously think, oh, we need this type of song, we need that type of song to make it a, you know, a complete work. It, right. We had no... The, the, the first album is simply a collection of, of the songs as they are right. um, and, and, and what's been written. I mean, we have a few... We have a few more. I think to avoid the, the, the second album trap of, of suddenly finding yourself with... Um, you're in the studio in a month and you've got eight songs to write and yeah. you have to you know, lock yourself away in a, in a cupboard in, in Mauritius if you're rich and, yeah. and peck them if you're not. <laughs> um, we'll, I mean, we'll just continue writing. It, 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 it's almost sort of Bon Jovi-esque in the fact that we, we have a guitar in the van and, and, <laughs> and, and drink too much and, and sing terrible road songs. Right. Which I'll, of course, never see the light of day. <laughs> <laughs> so as well, I mean, inevitably, as the album gets released, you'll zip off around the world and, and do the touring. Um, I don't know how you feel about it, but like especially in um, in recent years, British bands have not been the world leaders, as it were, mm -hmm. on, on especially in an alternative scene. I mean, America has very much taken over from there. How, how do you feel about you know Gene's position as you go out and show yourself to um, the world? Well, I don't really consider us a British band. I, I, I think we're a band who happens to be British. Right. Um, uh, but you you hear you hear people sort of bemoaning the fact that uh, that you know. English and British bands haven't done very well in America, and it's not really something that interests me. I'm not too concerned. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't have Union Jack pants. Right. Um, and I, I w for me, we're we're, sim we're simply a band. And I see no reason why we can't do well in America. Um, I mean, obviously, it has a slightly different psyche from Britain, and we, we do have certain British influences, but we're not. I wouldn't say we were quintessentially British right. by any means. More like part of the furniture. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a nice, nice. I mean, like the thing is, <laughs> I mean, the record companies are quite sort of keen to send their bands off to America, and uh, as this is a European station, I mean, uh, we sort of. The thing that I, I feel that with a lot of the failings of the British bands is that they just don't put the work in, basically. Mm, um, that's Because be we're used to sort of being on a small island mm -hmm. in England and stuff. Um, are, you, are you fans of getting out there and doing, I don't know, like three months worth of gigs in a row? We won't go. We, we won't do something that will make us mad, but we are prepared to put the hours in. Certainly, right. we will. We will probably visit America three times this year. And how about Europe? What will you be doing? We're doing a. We're starting a tour. I think the second week of April. Right. We shall be covering well, certainly eighty, ninety percent of Europe. We'll be out there for a month, and then there'll probably be another month. September time. Right. So and is that like headlining the club tour? Yes, yes. Great. Well, thanks for coming in. Good luck with the record and the touring. And uh, this is the late single from Gene. This is Haunted by You. <laughs> Hey. 
I'll be haunted by you